since the, I know there's a lot of people out there that didn't like the Dukes of Hazard movie, even though it did okay and what have you, but what about its prequel that got released direct to video? Well then, strap yourselves in and get ready, because we're about to head to Hazard County again with a review of the Dukes of Hazard: The Beginning. Black Days Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Joel, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 2007 made-for-TV buddy comedy flick, The Dukes of Hazard Beginning, released by Warner Brothers under their Warner premiere banner. The film was directed by Robert Berlinger, ran by Shane Morris, based on the characters created by Guy Walden. The film stars Jonathan Bennett and Randy Wayne in the roles of Bo and Luke, along with April Scott as Daisy, and Chris McDonald as Boss Hogg, and Ireland Williams as Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane, plus Willie Nelson once again playing Uncle Jesse. Now, although this film originally premiered exclusively in edited form on ABC Family, free free form, on March 4th, and then its R-rated actual original R-rated cut, along with an unrated version, were released a week and a half later on physical media. Like its predecessor, it did get dissed and what have you, but however, it was, okay, well, a little more fun and what have you. All right, here's how the story goes. Set in fictional towns of Georgia, Bo Duke is arrested for destructive driving in neighboring Chickasha County, while Luke Duke is arrested for blowing up illegal fireworks. Both of the teenage boys are paroled to the care under, well, of their Uncle Jesse in neighboring Hazard County, sentenced to a summer of hard work on the farm. Jesse is carrying on the family tradition of producing the best moonshine in the county. Bo and Luke quickly tire of farm work to take an interest in some of the local girls in Hazard. Attempting to visit the Boar's Nest Bar, they see Jesse mean with Jefferson Davis Hogg. Well, he is arranging for his regular bribe to the county commissioner to look oh, look the other way from his legal, well, I mean, not illegal, I, I'm getting tongue-tied, illegal moonshine operation. The Duke boys inadvertently allow Hogg's prize pig to escape, and it falls off the roof and is injured. Furious, Hogg demands a sizable amount a money from Jesse due in two weeks, or he'll foreclose on the farm. Well, Jesse believes his only recourse is his moonshine operation, but he can't deliver enough in two weeks. So Bo and Luke volunteer and sell to find a fast car to do the job. The boys enlist in help with the help of their cousin Daisy Duke, who had just turned 18, but is somewhat of a wallflower. Wonders why boys do not notice her. She takes them to the high school shop class where they meet Cooter Davenport, who gives them a fast engine. They go to the junkyard to find a suitable car, but, they're not, but they don't like what they see. On their way home, they find some girls sunbathing next to Hawk's Ravine, while Cooter and the Duke cousins are standing together at a ledge overlooking a swimming hole. From high atop their rocky cliff, Bo purposefully shoves Luke into Try and impress the girls, and immediately thereafter, Bo learns from Cooter that most people who jump in and end up either crippled on life support or brain damage. Not seeing Luke surface after plunging into the water, Bo jumps in to save him. Instead, Cooter is seen dragging Luke onto shore while underwater, Bo discovers an abandoned 1969 Dodge Charger and believes it would be the perfect car for them. So they retrieve the car from the pond, already in the iconic orange color with a rebel flag painted on the top. They clean, repair, and repaint the car, and after adding their new engine, the General Lee is reborn. Well, the moonshine deliveries go well, but before they raise enough money to pay off Hog, he declares Hazard a dry county and offers a $25,000 reward for anyone who uncovers an illegal moonshine operation. He will turn the boar's 
Ness into an ice cream park. Meanwhile, Daisy applies for a job at the bar to help raise the money. Huey, the Boar's Nest bartender, says she is not the type of girl who should work there and refuses her, but she is smitten. She undergoes a, uh, undergoes a makeover to impress him. Cutting her jeans into very short shorts. Henceforth, the Daisy Dukes are born. And wearing a shirt tied to show her midriff and lay her hair down, the bar patrons are all stunned by how good she looks. And Huey hires her immediately and agrees to take her on a date. Yep. So apparently, there's more to come and what have you. But this is all the story I'm going to give to you. But... I will tell you, a hog is up to no good, as you can imagine. Even with the help of Sheriff Roscoe P. Coulter. But anyway, that's all the story I'm going to give to you. I'm not going to give you the rest of this, because this was made for TV, and I don't think a lot of y'all have heard of this one. But even though it came out over a year and a half after its predecessor, well, actually, or else I would call this one a precursor. Well, you get the point. Anyway, my thoughts on the film. Well, I am going to say it was fine and what. It was fine, okay. But it really wasn't too gray and what have you. But I am going to say that they did um, bring in some really pretty decent care, well, cast members. Now, first of all, we have taking on the role of Bo what is Jonathan Bennett, who you may remember for playing Aaron Samuels in the original Mean Girls with Lindsay Lohan. He also appeared in Cheaper by a Dozen 2, as well as Van Wilder, Freshman Year, and Bachelor Party Vegas. And he's been in lots of other films and also on various television shows. And he, of course, he'd later go on to be the host of Food Network's Halloween Wars program. Now, Luke is played by Randy Fenwick. Not Fenwick, Frederick. I'm getting that name mixed up. I'm, I'm sorry, everyone. Now, he's done several mostly independent to program, well, I mean movies and what have you. I'm getting too carried away with some of this. He's recently been on some shows and what have you. Some shows that came out before this, including, well, the well, the last few shows that come to the WB network, like Jack and Bobby and Living with Fran. He also appeared on The Closer and NCIS. And after this, he'd later go on to appear on Numbers, The Secret Life of the American Teenager, and True Blood. Now, his performance as Luke, I'm going to say he wasn't too bad. Uh, he did all right. Daisy is played by April Scott. Who actually was a former model. Uh, actually, and... Well, she had recently appeared on episodes of The Shield, CSI Miami, and Entourage. She even appeared in On Deal or No Deal. So I'm going to say, I will say, I think she nailed it as Daisy. Well, well, not when we turn, when she turned out she appears to be a wallflower. She kind of thought, be all, I don't know, kind of like a geeky version or, or something like that. But hey, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, we have M. Shulman taking on the role of Venus. Yeah, all right, and why have you? Harlan Williams, I know that guy very well. He's been in numerous hit or miss films. He's been in films like Dumb and Dumber, Rocket Man, Half Baked, There's Something About Mary, The Whole Nine Yards, Freddy Got Fingered. And sorority boys. Uh, plus a lot of others and what have you. He takes on the role of Sheriff Roscoe P. Coltrane. Well, at least unlike MC Gain, he 
they got that character just a little bit right and what have you. Now, the role of Cooter went to Joel Moore, who recently played Owen Dittman in Dodgeball, True Underdog Story. He also appeared in Grandma's Boy and Hatchet. And recently, uh, he, um, he, we recently saw him as Dr. Norm Spellman in James Cameron's Avatar, as well as its sequel. Uh, he will be returning to that role in Avatar 3 when it comes around. Let's see here. And we also have the character of Lulu Coltrane Hall, played by Sherilyn Finn. Now, this was a big surprise. Most people know Finn for playing Audrey Horn on Twin Peaks. Now, I must say that I was surprised to see the, that character on there. Rarely could remember seeing that character because I, I hadn't watched all of the original series. Since even though I did see as a youngster, but I didn't have no recollection of seeing it. But I'm going to say it was really good to have her in there. Now, now Chris, well, Christopher McDonald, most of you know him best for playing Sharon McGavin in Happy Gilmore, and he also appeared in Grease 2 long before that, and voiced Kent Mansley in The Iron Giant. He plays Boss Hog. Now, I'm going to say this time they got that character right as well, unlike what he did with Burt Reynolds in the theatrical film itself. So I'm going to say he, was, he wasn't too bad, but Willie Nelson, once again, the, absolutely really funny as Uncle Jesse and what have you. And as I've said before, he's no Denver Powell, but he really does get a few good, give us a few funny laughs, which that's another thing I forgot to mention in my review of the film, of the theatrical film. But even so, he still provided a, a few good laughs. This film sets out a measly 20% on Rotten Tomatoes, but at least that's 6% higher than the theatrical film. So, anyway, oh, Duh, I forgot one more thing. The Balladeer is now Gary Cole, who also recently appeared in Dodgeball, a true underdog story. Of course, I also know him best from his work on Office Space. And uh, let's see. And of course, um, Mr. Brady in uh, the Brady Bunch movie and the very Brady sequel. Plus a lot of other, other things he's done. Uh, Yeah, he was also, um, oh yeah, he was recently in Talladega Nights, The Ballad of Ricky Bobby, and, um, uh, let's see, One Hour Photo. Oh, he still continues to do some stuff to this day. Of course, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Recently, he had been on, um, Chicago Fire, and, well, now, of course, he currently plays um, Alden Parker on NCIS and has appeared in a few episodes of its spin-offs, NCIS Hawaii and NCIS LA. Anyway, yeah, I will say he was good and what have you. I almost didn't know that was him, but now I know. So, anyway, well, it's a wee bit of a a step from theatrical film, they did get some characters right and what have you, in, well, in my opinion, but you don't have to take my word for it. But The Dukes of Hazzard beginning, uh, it's all right. It's not great, though, but it's okay and what have you, as much as I hate to say about the say about the first one. I would only recommend you give this a one-time watch, or if you weren't too thrilled with the first film, then I'd say skip this, avoid it. But... That just depends if you're interested in seeing what this looks like. You might get a few good laughs out of it. So anyway, what did you think of the Dukes of Hazard the beginning? Let me know in the comments section below. If you liked the video, click the like button, subscribe, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you a review of another bad film that really didn't do that great. And that would be Monkey Bone. Yeah. Anyway. So I hope you enjoyed this, and if you did, check out my 
previous vids featuring the Dukes themselves. In the upper left-hand corner is the TV log on the original Dukes of Hazard series from 1979, which ran until 1985. Or go to the upper right-hand corner and see my review of the Dukes of Hazard theatrical film itself. Or if you'd like something else that might be just a little bit more fast and what have you, you can check out my spoiler-free review of the recent hit film Fast X, the late, the latest installment of the Fast and the Furious franchise from last year in 2023. In the bottom right-hand corner, is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.